this person thy gods are good to thee. Try yet again, O captain. Double or quits? No more. And not in the vein. Captain, a stranger approaches. Stand! Who goes there? The bearer of evil tidings. Pass him in. Thou that laughest in the house of Cleopatra the Queen, and in the teeth of Belzanor, the captain of her guard. I am Belafris, descended from the gods. Hail, cousin. Hail, Hail cousin. cousin. <laughs> All the queen's guards are descended from the gods, save myself. I am a Persian, descended from many kings. Hail, cousins. Hail, mortal. You have been in battle, Belafris, and you are a soldier, among soldiers. He will not let the queen's women have the first of your tidings. I have no tidings, except that we shall all have our throats cut presently. Women, soldiers, and all. I thought so. Tell us what befell. I tell, tell us, us, tell us, tell us. Tell... Know then that I serve in the guard of the Temple of Ra here in Memphis. We went to Alexandria to inquire of King Ptolemy how we of Egypt should deal with the Roman Pompey, newly come to our shores after his defeat by Caesar at Pharsalia. Caesar defeated Pompey? Does Roman then fight Roman? Even as Egyptian fights Egyptian. What did you learn from the Queen's brother Ptolemy, the pretender? We learnt that Caesar is coming also in hot pursuit of his foe, and that Ptolemy has slain Pompey. Nay more, we found that Caesar is already come, for we had not made half a day's journey on our way back when we came upon a city rabble flying from his legions. And ye, the temple guard, did ye not withstand these legions? What men could, that we did. But this Caesar throws a legion at you where you are weakest, as he throws a stone from a catapult. And that legion is as a man with one head, a thousand arms, and no religion. I have fought against them, and I know. <laughs> Were you frightened, cousin? <laughs> no, cousin, but I was beaten. <laughs> Could you not die? There was no time. All was over in a moment. But now I am come to warn you that you must open your gates to Caesar. For his advance guard is scarce an hour behind me, and there is not an Egyptian warrior left standing between you and his legion. Whoa, Lars! Lead him to the door, quick! Now this news will run through the palace like fire through stubble. What should we do to save the women from the Romans? Why not kill them? Because we should have to pay blood money. Better let the Romans kill them. It's cheaper. Oh, subtle one, oh, serpent. But your queen. True. We must carry off Cleopatra. I will take her on the crupper of my horse. <laughs> Salutation from Julius Caesar. I have wandered in many lands, seeking the lost region from which my birth into this world exiled me. 
and the company of creatures such as I myself. I found flocks and pastures, men and cities, but no other Caesar. No heir native to me, no man kindred to me. None who can do my day's deed or think my night's thought. In the little world yonder, Sphinx, my place is as high as yours in this great desert. Only I wander, and you sit still. I conquer, and you endure. I work and wonder. You watch and wait. Sphinx, you and I, strangers to the race of men, are no strangers to one another. Have I not been conscious of you and of this place since I was born? Rome is a madman's dream. This is my reality. My way hither was the way of destiny. For I am he of whose genius you are the symbol. Part brute, part woman, and part God. Nothing of man in me at all. Have I read your riddle, Sphinx? Old gentleman. Immortal God. Old gentleman, don't run away. Old gentleman, don't run away. This to Julius Caesar. Oh, gentlemen! Sphinx, you presume on your centuries. I'm younger than you, for your voice is but a girl's voice as yet. Climb up here, quickly, or the Romans will come and eat you. A child at its breast. A divine child. Come up, quickly. You must get up at its side and creep round. Who are you? Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. Queen of the Gypsies, you mean? You mustn't be disrespectful to me, or the Sphinx will let the Romans eat you. Come up. It's quite cosy here. What a dream. What a magnificent dream. Only let me not wake. <laughs> Take care. Ah, that's right. Now, sit down. You may have the other paw. It is very powerful and will protect us. But it wouldn't take any notice of me or keep me company. I'm glad you've come. I was very lonely. Did you happen to see a white cat anywhere? Have you lost one? Yes, the sacred white cat. Isn't it dreadful? I brought him here to sacrifice him to the Sphinx. But when we got a little away from the city, a black cat called him, and he jumped out of my arms and ran away to it. Do you think that the black cat can have been my great, great, great-grandmother? Your great-great-great-grandmother? Well, why not? Nothing would surprise me on this night of nights. I think it must have been. My great-great-grandmother's great-grandmother was a black kitten of the sacred white cat. And my blood is made with Nile water. That is why my hair is so wavy. What are you doing here this time of night? Do you live here? Of course not. I am the queen. And I shall live in the palace of Alexandria when I killed my brother who drove me out of it. When I'm old enough, I shall do just what I like. I shall be able to poison the slaves and see them wriggle. And pretend to Fatata Dita, my nurse, that she's to be put into the fiery furnace. Meanwhile, why are you not at home and in bed? Because the Romans are coming to eat us all. You aren't at home in bed either. Oh, yes, I am. I live in a tent. And I am now in that tent, fast asleep and dreaming. <laughs> you suppose I believe you are real, you impossible little dream witch? You are a funny old gentleman. I like you. That spoils the dream. Why don't you dream that I'm young? I wish you were. Only I think I should be more afraid of you. I like men, especially young men with round, strong arms. But I'm afraid of them. You are old and rather wrinkly. But you have a nice voice, and I like to have someone to talk to. Though I think you are a little mad. It is the moon that makes you talk to yourself in that silly way. Oh, you heard that, did you? I was saying my prayers to the Great Sphinx. But this isn't the Great Sphinx. What? This is only a dear little kitten of the Sphinx. Why, the Great Sphinx is so big it has a temple between its paws. This is my pet Sphinx. Tell me, do you think the Romans have any sorcerers who could take us away from the Sphinx by magic? Why, are you afraid of the Romans? Oh, they would eat us if they caught us. They are barbarians. Their chief is called Julius Caesar. His father was a tiger and his mother a burning mountain and his nose is like an elephant's trunk. 
They all have long noses and ivory tusks and little tails and seven arms with a hundred arrows in each. And they live on human flesh. Would you like me to show you a real Roman? No. Oh, you're frightening me. No matter. This is only a dream. It is not a dream. It is not a dream. See! <laughs> How dare you! You said you were dreaming. I, I only wanted to show you. Oh, come, come. Don't cry. A queen mustn't cry. Cleopatra, can you see my face well? Yes. It is so white in the moonlight. Are you sure it is the moonlight that makes me look whiter than an Egyptian? Do you notice that I have a rather long nose? It is a Roman nose, Cleopatra. Ah! Ah! Fight him into, Sphinx, fight him into. I meant to sacrifice the white bear. Indeed, I did. Indeed. Cleopatra, shall I show you a way to prevent Caesar from eating you? Do, do, do. I will steal the crown jewels and give them to you. I will make the river Nile water your lands twice a year. I My child, your gods are afraid of the Romans. You see, the Sphinx dare not bite me, nor prevent me carrying you off to Julius Caesar. You won't, you won't. You said you wouldn't. Caesar never eats women, but he eats girls and cats. Now, you're a silly little girl, and you're descended from the black kitten. You're both a girl and a cat. And will he eat me? Yes. Unless you make him believe that you're a woman. Oh. Then you must get a sorcerer to make a woman of me. Are you a sorcerer? Perhaps. But it'll take a long time. And this very night in the palace of your father's, you must stand face to face with Caesar. No, no, I don't! Whatever dread may be in your soul, however terrible Caesar may be to you, you must confront him as a brave woman and a great queen. And you must feel no fear. If your hand shakes, if your voice quavers, then night and death. But if he thinks you worthy to rule, he will set you on the throne by his side and make you the real ruler of Egypt. No, he will find me out. He will find me out. He is easily deceived by women. Their eyes dazzle him. Then we will cheat him. If you do that, he will eat you at one mouthful. Oh, no, no, please. I will be good. I will do whatever you tell me. I will be your slave. Hark. What was that? Caesar's voice. Let us run away. Come, oh, come. You are safe with me until you stand on our throne to receive Caesar. Lead me to your palace in the desert. Oh, I will, I will. Come, come, come. The gods are angry. Do not feel the earth shaking. It is the tread of Caesar's legion. This way, quickly. And let us look for the white cat as we go. It is he who has turned you into a Roman. Is this? This is where I sit when I'm allowed to wear my crown and robes. Tata Tita! <laughs> Order the slave to light the lamps. Do you think I may? Of course. You're the queen. Go on. Light all the lamps. this you have with you. How dare you order the lamps to be lighted without my permission? Who is she? Tata Tita. Chief Nurse. I speak to the Queen. Be silent. Is this how your servants know their place? Send her away. Do as the Queen has bidden. You are the Queen. Send her away. Tata Tita, dear. You must go away. Just for a little. You're not commanding her to go. You're begging her. You're no queen. You'll be eaten. Farewell. No, no, no! 
Don't leave me. Roman does not stay with queens who are afraid of their slaves. I am not afraid. Indeed, I am not afraid. We shall see who is afraid here. Here, Potter. On your knees, woman. Am I also a child that you dare trifle with me? Slave? Can you cut off a head? Have you remembered yourself, mistress? Oh, queen, forget not thy servants in the days of thy greatness. Go! Be gone! Go away! Give me something to beat her with. So, you scratch kitten, do you? There must be somebody. I will beat him. Love only king. I will make all the men I love kings. I will have many young kings with round, strong arms. And when I'm tired of them, I shall whip them to death. But you will always be my king. My nice, kind, wise, good old king. Oh, my wrinkle. You will be the most dangerous of all Caesar's conquests. Caesar? I forgot Caesar. You will tell him that I'm a queen, won't you? A real queen? Listen. Just run away and hide until Caesar is gone. If you fear Caesar, you are no true queen. And though you were to hide beneath a pyramid, he would go straight to it and lift it with one hand. And then, oh, <laughs> be afraid if you dare. Caesar approaches the palace of Cleopatra. Oh. Come, take your place. Oh, there, Tita Tota. How'd you call your slaves? Clap your hands. Tota Tita, bring the queen's robes and her crown and her women and prepare. Yes, the crown for Tata Tita. I shall wear the crown. For whom must the queen put on her state? For a citizen of Rome, a king of kings. How dare you ask questions? Go and do as you are told. Of all the Queen's women, these two alone are left. The rest are fled. True or enough. Poor Caesar generally has to dress himself. The Queen of Egypt is not a Roman barbarian. Be brave, my nursling. Hold up your head before this stranger. Are you trembling? No, I... I... You must tell Caesar that I am the queen. You will not ask me. He will know Cleopatra by her pride, her courage, her majesty and her beauty. Is it sweet or bitter to be a queen, Cleopatra? Bitter. Cast out fear, and you will conquer Caesar. Oh! So be it, and if you die for it, you must make the Queen's word good. Forward, march! Now, if you quail...
here for our second in command, Rufio. This city is Alexandria. Remember that. Alexandria, the capital of Egypt. You've got to behave yourselves here. Be stiffish with the men, but you may fraternize with the women. <laughs> Silence! Silence, I tell you! That is Rufio. Attention! Half turn left! Centurion, sir, see that building? That's the royal palace. Caesar's in there. I'm going now to join him. Keep a platoon of picked men within call. They may be wanted. Picked men, you understand? Yes, sir. What are these Romans? Peasants brought up to scare crows, sons of smiths, millers and tanners. And are we not nobles, consecrated to arms, descended from the gods? The gods are not always good to their poor relations. Oh, subtle one, oh, serpent. Sixteen, eighteen, twenty-four. Let us wait and take sides with the winner. Ptolemy! Cleopatra! Cleopatra or Ptolemy? The king of Egypt has a word to speak. Please, for the king's word. Take notice of this, all of you. I am the firstborn son of Oletes, the flute blower who was your king. My sister Berenice drove him from his throne and reigned in his stead. But... But... The gods would not suffer? Yes. The gods would not suffer. The gods... Impiety. I forget what the gods would not suffer. The king wished to say the gods would not suffer the impiety of his sister to go unpunished. Yes, yes, I remember the rest of it. Therefore the gods sent a stranger, one Mark Antony, a Roman captain of horsemen, across the sands of the desert, and he set my father again upon the throne. And now? And now that my father is dead, my sister Cleopatra would snatch the kingdom from me and reign in my place. But the gods would not suffer. Will not maintain. Oh, yes. Will not maintain such iniquity. But with the help of the witch, Fatata Tita, she has cast a spell on the Roman Julius Caesar to uphold her false pretense to rule Egypt. Take notice, then, that I will not suffer. I will not suffer. What is it that I will not suffer now? The king will not suffer a foreigner to take from him the throne of our Egypt. <laughs> Tell the king Achilles, how many soldiers and horsemen follow Julius Caesar? But two Roman legions, O king, 3,000 soldiers and scarce a thousand horsemen. <laughs> Caesar approaches. The king permits the Roman commander to enter. Which is the king, the man or the boy? I am Pothinus, the guardian of my lord, the king. So you are the king. Dull work at your age, eh? Your servant, Pothinus. And this gentleman? Achilles, the king's general. Ah, a general. I am a general myself, but I began too old. Health and many victories, Achilles. As the gods will, Caesar. And you, sir, are... Uh... Theodotus, the king's tutor. So... You teach men how to be kings, Theodotus. That is very clever of you. And uh, this place? The council chamber of the chancellors of the king's treasury, Caesar. That reminds me. I want some money. The king's treasury is poor, Caesar. Yes, I notice there is but one chair in it. Bring a chair there, some of you, for Caesar. Caesar? Oh, no, no, my boy. That is your chair of state. Sit down. Sit down. A chair for Caesar. <coughs> Sit on that, Caesar. 
Oh, I forgot. I had not made my companions known to you, Pythinus. This gentleman is Rufio, my comrade in arms. This is Britannus, my secretary. Oh, no, no. He is an islander from the western end of the world. Now, Pythinus, to business. I want 16,000 talents. 16,000? Impossible! Then it's not so much money in the king's treasury. The royal taxes have not been collected for a whole year. Oh, yes, they have, Pythinus. My officers have been collecting them all morning. <laughs> Is it possible that Caesar, the conqueror of the world, can find time to occupy himself with such a trifle as our taxes? My friend, taxes are the chief business of a conqueror of the world. You must pay, Pythinus, but in return for your bounty, I will settle this dispute about the throne for you, if you will. You say the matter has been at issue for a year. May I have ten minutes at it? And you will do as you please, doubtless. Good. But first, let us have Cleopatra here. Cleopatra? Uh, she is not in Alexandria. I think she is. Call Tota Tita. Oh, there! Tita Tota! Who pronounces the name of Tata Tita, the Queen's chief nurse? No one can pronounce it Tota, except yourself. Where's your mistress? <laughs> Will the Queen favor us with her presence for a moment? Am I to behave like a Queen? Yes. You may go, Tata Tita. You are not to be king, you little crybaby. You are to be eaten by the Romans. Come here, my boy, and stand by me. Take your throne. I don't want it. Go this instant and sit down in your place. Go, Ptolemy. Always take a throne when it's offered you. Now, Pythinus. Aren't you going to speak to me? Be quiet. Open your mouth again before I give you leave and you shall be eaten. I am not afraid. A queen must not be afraid. Eat my husband there if you like. He's afraid. Your husband? What do you mean? That little thing. Husband? Caesar, you're a stranger here and do not know our laws. The kings and queens of Egypt may not marry except with their own royal blood. Ptolemy and Cleopatra are born king and consort, just as they're born brother and sister. Caesar, this is not proper. Not proper? I say it is a scandal. Scandal or not, my friend. It opens the gates of peace. Hear then what I propose. Hear Caesar there. Ptolemy and Cleopatra shall reign jointly in Egypt. Once. Peace with honor, Pythinus? What conceit! A Roman trick! No! We will not have it! No! Caesar, be honest! The money you are demanding is the price of our freedom. Take it and leave us to settle our own affairs. Yes, go back to your own country. Egypt belongs to us, not to you. Egypt for the Egyptians! Yes! Do you forget there's a Roman army of occupation here, left by Aulus Gabinius when he set up your toy king for you? And now, under my command, I am the Roman general here, Caesar. And also the Egyptian general, eh? That is so, Caesar. So you can make war on the Egyptians in the name of Rome, and on the Romans, on me if necessary, in the name of Egypt. That is so, Caesar. And which side are you on at present, if I may presume to ask, general? On the side of the right. And of the gods. Mm. How many men have you? 
That will appear when I take the field. Are your men Romans? If not, it doesn't matter how many there are. Yes, we shall see. Oh, oh, oh. uh, it is useless to try to bluff us, Rufio. Caesar has been defeated before, and he may be defeated again. What can you do with 4,000 men? <laughs> <laughs> and what can you do without money? Away with you. <laughs> Go back to your oh, den. <laughs> you like that? Are you afraid? Well, my dear, what they say is quite true. But if you go away, I shall not be queen. I shall not go away until you are queen. Achilles, if you are not a fool, you will take that girl while she is under your hand. Why not take Caesar as well, Achilles? Well said, Rufio. Why not? <laughs> try it, Achilles. Try yes, it. Yes, take Caesar and hold it. By no means. Caesar's guests, gentlemen. Caesar's guests. Won't you cut their heads off? Well, cut off your brother's head? Why not? He'd cut off mine if he got the chance. Wouldn't you, Ptolemy? I would. I will, too, when I grow up. Caesar, if you attempt to detain us... You will succeed, Egyptian. Make up your mind to that. The road to Rome is open, and you shall travel it, if Caesar chooses. I could do no less, Pathinus, to secure the retreat of my own soldiers. I am accountable for every life among them. I am the king's guardian. I stand on my right here. Where is your right? It is in Rufio's scabbard, my friend. I may not be able to keep it there much longer. And this is Roman justice. It's not Roman gratitude, I hope. Is Caesar's life of so little account to him that he forgets that we have saved it? My life, is that all? Your life, your laurels, your future. I can call a witness to prove that but for us, the Roman army of occupation led by Pompey, the greatest soldier in the world, would now have Caesar at its mercy. Ho oh, there, Lucius Septimius. Come forth and testify before Caesar. No. No. Yes, I say. Let the military tribune bear witness. Lucius Septimius. Bear witness, Lucius Septimius. Caesar came to Egypt in pursuit of his foe. Did we shelter his foe? As Pompey's foot touched the Egyptian shore, his head fell by the stroke of my sword. We have given you a full and sweet measure of vengeance. Vengeance? If I could stoop to vengeance, what would I not exact from you as the price of this murdered man's blood? Was he not my son-in-law, my ancient friend? Am I Julius Caesar, or am I a wild beast that you fling to me the grey head of the old soldier, the laurel conqueror, and then claim my gratitude for it? Oh, be gone, you fill me with horror. Ha! <laughs> you have seen severed heads before, Caesar. And severed right hands, too, I think. Some thousands of them, after you vanquished the king of the Gauls. Did you spare him with all your clemency? Was that vengeance? Would that it had been. Vengeance, at least, is human. No, by the gods. No severed right hands and the brave king of the Gauls basely strangled in a vault beneath the capital were a wise severity, a necessary protection to the commonwealth, a duty of statesmanship. Follies and fictions ten times bloodier than honest vengeance. What a fool I was then. To think that men's lives should be at the mercy of such fools. Lucius Septimius, pardon me. Why should the slayer of the king of the Gauls rebuke the slayer of Pompey? 
You are free to go, all here in this palace. Free? Achilles, his army, renegades and all? Free, Rufio. Lucius Septimius, you're free to go with the rest. Or stay if you will, and I'll find a place for you in my service. The odds are against you, Caesar. I go. Farewell. Come, Vitinus, Achilles, whilst there is yet time. Do you suppose he'd let us go if he had our heads in his hands? Caesar, this is not good sense. Your duty to Rome demands that her enemies should be prevented from doing further mischief. It's no use talking to him, Britain, as you may save your breath to cool your porridge. But mark this, Caesar, clemency is very well for you. But what is it for your soldiers who have to fight tomorrow the men you spared yesterday? You may give what orders you please, but I, for one, will take no prisoners. I'll kill my enemies in the field. Then I shall never have to fight them again. Now, with your leave, I'll see these gentry off the premises. What? Have they left the boy alone? Shame, shame. Come, Your Majesty. Is he... is he turning me out of my palace? You're welcome to stay if you wish. Go, my boy, I'll not harm you. But you'll be safer away among your friends. Here you're in the lion's mouth. It's not the lion, I fear, but the jackal. Brave boy. Little silly. You think that very clever. Bertonus, attend the king. Give him in charge of that Pythinus fellow. And this piece of goods. What's to be done with her? However, I suppose I may leave that to you. Did you mean me to go with the rest? You're afraid to do just as you please, Cleopatra. Then you don't care whether I stay or not? Of course, I'd rather you stay. Much, much rather? Much, much rather. Then I consent to stay, because I am asked. But I do not want to, mind. Is quite understood. Tota Tita! <laughs> My name is not Tota Tita, it is Tata Tita. Well, to fatter feet, I will forgive the erring tongue of a Roman. Tota, the Queen will hold state here in Alexandria, engage women to attend upon her, and do all that is needful. Am I then the mistress of the Queen's household? No. I am mistress of the Queen's household. Go and do as you are told or I will have you thrown into the Nile this very afternoon to poison the poor crocodiles. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You are very sentimental, Caesar. But you are clever. And if you do as I tell you, you will soon learn how to govern.
barley water, Caesar. this morning. No. I had my month's bath the day before yesterday. In future, you must have a bath every day. No, no, I should die of it. You must. Your life is changed. You are still my child. But to all others, you are now a grown woman and a queen. Yes, I am a queen. Tata, what will Caesar do with me? Ask rather what you will do with him. Oh, my child, you have charmed him. You are safe, you are powerful. I will guide you until you learn how to guide yourself. Fear nothing. Who could fear Caesar? He is not great and terrible. He's only an elderly gentleman. Rather sad looking and wrinkled, but very kind. He is a magician. And magicians can change their shapes as they please. Everything about him is magical. He would not sleep in the golden chamber, but made his soldiers bring a bare stretcher from the camp and put it in his study. Even then he did not sleep in it, but sat up working like a slave all night. Yet everyone obeys him as if he were a god. I think he is a god in disguise, for he has changed your nature, has he not? Oh, yes, he has, that is true. Tata before he came, I was afraid of you more than anyone else on earth. And now, I'm not afraid of you at all. Tell me, what must I do to begin with now that I'm really a queen? You must begin by having a bath every day. Come, child, and get it over. You will soon get used to it and love it. Never. It is too dreadful. Oh, well, if I must be washed again so soon for that, I must be a scented bath. Have you scented it? No, Caesar hates perfumes. And if you redden your lips, he will not kiss you. Come on. God could be so unlike a man. I think I must eat you after all. You mustn't talk to me now as if I were a child. You have been growing up since the Sphinx introduced us that night. You think you know more than I do already. No, that would be very silly of me. Of course I know that, but are you angry with me? No. Then why are you so thoughtful? I have work to do. Work? What nonsense! Remember, you are a king now. I've made you one. Kings don't work. And who taught you that, little kitten, eh? My father was king of Egypt, and he never worked. Well, he lost his throne. And how did he get it back again? I will tell you. A beautiful young man, with strong, round arms, came over the desert with many horsemen and gave my father back his throne. I was only 12 then. Oh, I wish he would come again now that I am a queen. I would make him my husband. It might be managed, perhaps. But it was I who sent that beautiful young man to help your father. You know him? Has he come with you? Oh, I wish he had. I wish he had. He is many, many years younger than you, is he not? He is somewhat younger. Would he be my husband, do you think, if I asked him? Very likely. But I shouldn't like to ask him. Could you... Could you not persuade him to ask me? without knowing that I wanted him to. 
My poor child. Why do you say that as if you were sorry for me? Does he love anyone else? I'm afraid so. Then I shall not be his first love. Not quite the first. He is greatly admired by women. Oh, I wish I could be the first. But if he loves me, I will make him kill all the rest. Tell me, is he still beautiful? Do his round, strong arms shine in the sun like marble? He is in excellent condition, considering how much he eats and drinks. Oh! You mustn't say common earthly things about him. I love him. He is a god. What is his name? His name is Mark Antony. Mark Antony. Mark Antony. Mark Antony. What a beautiful name. Oh, I love you for sending him to help my father. You must run away for a little and send my secretary to... Oh, no, no, no. I want to stay and hear you talk about Mark Anton. But if I don't get to work, Pothinus and the rest of them will cut us off from the harbour and then the road to Rome will be blocked. No matter. I don't want you to go back to Rome. But you want Mark Antony to come from here? Oh, yes, 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 I forgot. Go quickly, Caesar, and keep the way over the sea open for my Mark Antony. <laughs> My comrades killed in the marketplace. Why? There's an army come to Alexandria, calling itself the Roman army. The Roman army of occupation. Commanded by one Achilles. Well? The citizens rose against us when the army entered the gates. They set upon us. I cut my way out. Good, sure, I'm glad to see you alive. We're here, we're besieged. What? Already? Caesar! Caesar! Yes, yes, I know. Oh. Combert, give the word to turn out on the beach and stand with the boats. Get your wound attended to. Britain, let's go with it. Rufio? We have some ships in the West Harbour. Mm -hmm. Burn them. Burn them? Take every boat we have in the East Harbour and seize the Pharos, that island with the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Leave half our men behind to hold the beach and the quay outside this palace. That's the way home to Rome. For the rest, Egypt for the Egyptians. Well, you know best, I suppose. Is that all? That's all. Those ships burnt yet? Be easy, I shall waste no time. Uh, Caesar, uh, Pothinus demands speech with you. Where is he? Waits in the council chamber. In my opinion, he needs a lesson. His manner is most insolent. Well, Pothinus, I have brought you our ultimatum, Caesar. Ultimatum? The door was open. You should have gone out through it before you declared war. You're my prisoner now. I, your prisoner? Do you know the King Ptolemy, with an army outnumbering your little troop by a hundred to one, is in possession of Alexandria? Well, get out of here if you can. And tell your friends not to kill any more Romans in the marketplace. Otherwise, my soldiers, who do not share my celebrated clemency, will probably kill you. Pass the word to the guard. Sinus is now a prisoner. Bitterness, fetch my armor. Caesar! Caesar! What? The ship's ablaze already? Impossible. It's not my doing. The Egyptians have saved me the trouble. They have captured the West Harbor. And the East Harbor, the lighthouse roof here. Can I embark a legion in five minutes? The first cohort's already on the key. If you want fast to work, well, come and do it yourself. Patience, Rufio, patience. Patience. Who's impatient here, you or I? Forgive me, Rufio, and honey them as much as you can. Help! 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 Whoa, alas! Whoa, alas! Help! Whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa! whoa. whoa. Help! 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 Who is slain? Slain? Worst of the death of 10,000 men. Loss irreparable to mankind. What's happened, man? The fire has spread from your ships. The library of Alexandria is in flames. Oh, is that all, Rufio? Is Britannus asleep? I sent him for my armor an hour ago. Britannus! Britannicus! Britannus! Caesar, will you go down to posterity as a barbarous soldier? Too ignorant to know the value of books. Oh, Theodotus, I'm an author myself. Good. burning there is the memory of mankind. A shameful memory. Let it burn. Would you destroy the past? Aye, and build the future with its ruins. 
Hearken to me, Theodotus, teacher of kings. I cannot spare you a man nor a bucket of water just now, but you shall pass freely out of the palace. Oh. Away with you to Achilles. Borrow his legions to put out the fire. Caesar, posterity will bless you. Will you stay to talk whilst the memory of mankind is burning? Sentry, pass Theodotus out. Away with you. Away with you. I must save the life. Who let him go? I More have, clemency. I have let him go to save the library. We must respect literature, Rufio. Folly on folly's head. Besides, every Egyptian we imprison means imprisoning two good Roman soldiers to guard him, eh? I might have known there was some fox's trick behind your fine talking. <laughs> All ready there! All ready! We wait for Caesar! Tell him Caesar is coming! The rogues! Oh, Caesar's guard there! Push off! All except the longboat! Stand by it to embark! I am going to dress you, Caesar. Sit down. Caesar, this is not proper. These Roman helmets are so becoming. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your bald! Cleopatra. <laughs> so that's why you wear the wreath. To hide it. Peace, Egyptian. They are the bays of the conqueror. Peace, thou, islander. Oh. You should rub your head with strong spirits of sugar, Caesar. That will make it grow. Cleopatra, do you like to be reminded that you're very young? No. Neither do I like to be reminded that I'm middle-aged. Love. Oh, how nice. You look only about 50 in it. You mustn't speak in that manner to Caesar. Is it true that when Caesar caught you on that island, you were painted all over blue? Blue is the color worn by all Britons of good standing. In war, we stain our bodies blue so that though our enemies may strip us of our clothes and our lives, they cannot strip us of our respectability. <laughs> Let me hang this on. Done talking. The long boat awaits you. The others race to the lighthouse. Is this well set today, Britannicus? At Pharsalia, it was as blunt as a barrel hoop. It'll split one of the Egyptians' hairs today, Caesar. I've set it myself. Oh! You're not really going into battle to be killed. No, Cleopatra. No man goes into battle to be killed. Oh, but they do get killed. My sister's husband was killed in battle. You mustn't go. Let him go. <laughs> Please, please don't go. What will happen to me if you never come back? Are you afraid? No. Come to the balcony and you shall see us take the pharos. You must learn to look on battles. Then take me with you. Let me come with you to the pharos. No, no, my child. You must stay here till I return. That is well. Now, Rufio, march. Oh! You won't be able to go. Why, what now? They're drying up the harbour with buckets. A multitude of soldiers over there. They're dipping up the water. This is your accursed clemency, Caesar. The Adotus has brought them. I meant him to, Rufio. They've come to put out the fire. The library will keep them busy whilst we seize the lighthouse, eh? More foxing. Caesar! Cleopatra? If all goes well, I shall be back this evening.
Centurion, I am Apollodorus, the Sicilian. My calling is to choose beautiful things for beautiful queens. Carpets for the queen's apartments in the palace. The queen? Oh, yes, yes. Pass him in. Pass all these bizarre people into the queen with their goods. But mind you, pass no one out that you have not passed in. Not even the queen herself. <laughs> I have brought my caravan past three sentinels, all so busy staring at the lighthouse that not one of them challenged me. Is this your Roman discipline? We're not here to watch the land, but the sea. Who's this piece of Egyptian crockery? Apollodorus rebuke this Roman dog and bid him bridle his tongue in the presence of the mistress of the queen's household. This is a great lady who stands high with Caesar. Tabatita! What are you dreaming of? Tabatita! No, no, you must not come. There are men here. All that ever I was born. Tabatita, I've thought of something. I want a boat at once. A boat? No, no, you cannot. Apollodorus, speak to the queen. Beautiful queen. I am Apollodorus, a Sicilian, your servant from the bazaar. I have no time for garbage today. Get me a boat. You cannot go on the water except in the royal barge. The royalty of Tatatita lies not in the barge, but in the queen. A touch of your majesty's foot on the meanest boat in the harbor will make it royal. Apollodorus, you are my perfect knight, and I will always buy my carpets through you. Can you row? My oar shall be your majesty's wings. Ho there, boatman! Hey! Whither shall I row, my queen? To the lighthouse comes! There! You cannot pass. How dare you? Do you know that I am the queen? I have my orders. You cannot pass. Statadita, strangle him. Keep off there. Pass under the palace and take the queen in with you. And how if I do neither? Then I'll drive this pylum through. At your service, my friend. Help him, help him. I shall not need help, my lady. What should it be? Sword against pylum or sword against sword? Roman against Sicilian, Cassio. Take that! <laughs> This old woman's dangerous. She's as strong as three men. Centurion, he would have slain the queen. So I would sooner than let her pass. Cleopatra, I am loath to offend you. But without Caesar's express orders, I dare not let you pass beyond the Roman lines. You must withdraw into the palace and examine your carpets there. I will not. I am the queen. Caesar doesn't speak to me as you do. Have Caesar's centurions changed manners with his scullions? I do my duty. That is enough for me. Majesty, when a stupid man is doing something he is ashamed of, he always declares it's his duty. As for you, Apollodorus, you may thank the gods you are not nailed to the palace door with a pylum for your meddling. Is this woman your wife? Jupiter, no! Not that the lady is not a very striking figure in her own way, but she is not my wife. Roman, I am Tata the mistress Keep of the... your hands off my men, mistress, or I'll have you pitched into the harbor, though you were as strong as ten men. We shall see who my sis loves best. A servant, Tadatito, or a dog of a Roman? Two more men to this post here. See that no one leaves the palace but this man and his merchandise. If he draws his sword again, kill him. Get about your business. You ought to know better. Off with you. Do not tantalize a poor man. Well, the queen, the centurion is still at hand. The Roman soldiers are incorruptible when their officers are looking. I shall have to carry your word to Caesar. Are these carpets very heavy? It matters not how heavy. There are plenty of porters. How do they put them into the boats? Do they throw them down? Not into the small boats, Majesty. It would sink them. Not into that man's boat, for instance? No, no. Too small. But you can take a carpet to Caesar in it if I send one. Surely. And you will have it carried gently down the steps and take great care of it, great, great care. More than of my own body. Good. Come, Tata Tita. No, Papa. 
Donna Doris, you must not come. I'll choose my carpet myself. You must wait here. Follow this lady. Obey her. This way. And take your shoes off before you put your feet on those stairs. Listen, are you sent here to watch me or watch the Egyptian? We know our duty. Well, then why don't you do it? Look! The Egyptians are moving. We're going to recapture the Pharaohs. They were attacked by land and sea along the Great Mole. Stay yourselves, the hunt is up! St. Julian, reinforce the platoons on the Mole. Yes, sir. Rufio, this has been a mad expedition. We should be beaten. The Egyptians cannot be such fools as not to storm the barricade and swoop down on us here before it is finished. It's the first time I've ever run an avoidable risk. I shouldn't have come to Egypt. An hour ago, you were all for victory. Yes, I was a fool. Rash, Rufio. Boyish. Boyish? Not a bit of it. Yeah. What are these for? Eat! That's what's the matter with you. When a man comes to your age, he runs down before the midday meal. One eat and drink. And take another look at our chances. My age? Yes, I'm an old man. Worn out now. Quite true, Rufio. Now, Achilles is still in his prime. Ptolemy is a boy. Well, every dog has his day. I've had mine. I cannot complain. These dates aren't bad, Rufio. That's my old Caesar. It's a great war. Now we've got rid of the women. You again? Keep your distance. Come within a yard of me, you old crocodile, and I'll give you this in your jaw. Peace, Roman fellow. You are now single-handed. Apollodorus, this carpet is Cleopatra's present to Caesar. It has rolled up in it ten precious goblets of the thinnest Iberian crystal and a hundred eggs of the sacred blue pigeon. On your honor, let not one of them be broken. On my head be it. Lay it carefully into the boat. Those eggs of which the lady's beast must weigh more than a pound apiece. This boat is much too small for such a load. Yes, yes, it's long! Curious porter, oh, the one natural son of a she camel. My boat can carry five men. Shall it not carry your lordship and a bale of pigeons' eggs? Oh, thou mangy dromedary, the gods shall punish thee for this envious wickedness. Oh, I cannot quit this bale now to beat thee, but another day I will lie in wait for thee. Mm. Mm. Oh. Peace there, all of you. In the name of the gods, Apollodorus, run no risks with that bale. Fear not, thou venerable grotesque. I guess it's great worth. Into the boat with it gently, my sons, my children. Gently, dogs! So, it is well. Do not step on it! Do not step on it! Be not excited, mistress. Oh. All is well. Oh, thou brute beast, thou has given my heart a turn. Here. <laughs> you hungry one? Oh. Robber of the poor. It's not enough! Oh, oh, bounteous prince. Oh, no, the bizarre. Oh, favored of the gods. Oh, father to all porters of the market. Farewell, Ferratita. I shall be at the lighthouse before the Egyptians. The gods speak. Farewell, valiant pylum pitcher. My heart, my heart, spread out thy wings. Spread out thy wings. Shake off thy heavy load of love. Caesar! 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 Our brave mariners have captured a treasure. Our enemies are delivered into our hands. In that bag? Wait till you hear, Caesar. This bag contains all the letters that have passed between our enemies. Well? 
Well, we shall now know who your foes are. The name of every man who's plotted against you since you crossed the Rubicon may be in these papers, for all we know. Put them in the fire. Put them? In the fire. Did you have me waste years of my life condemning men who will be my friends when I prove that my friendship is worth more than that of my enemies? But your honor, the honor of Rome. I do not make human sacrifices to my honor as your druids do. Since you won't burn them, at least I can drown them. Caesar, this is mere eccentricity. Are all traitors to be allowed to go free for the sake of a paradox? Caesar, when the island is finished preaching, call me again. Oh, Caesar, my great master. If only I could persuade you to regard life seriously as men do in my country. Do they truly do so, Britannus? Well, have you not been there? Have you not seen them? What Britain speaks as you do in your moments of levity? What Britain neglects to attend the services at the sacred grove? What Britain wears clothes of many colors as you do? Instead of <laughs> plain blue, as all solid, well-esteemed men should. These are moral questions with us. Well, well, my friend, someday I shall settle down and wear a blue toga, perhaps. Meanwhile, I must get on as best I can in my flippant Roman way. What now? Hail! Oh, what is this? Who are you? How did you come here? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm not going to eat you. Hail, great Caesar! I am Apollodorus, a Sicilian, an artist. An artist? A vagabond! He's mayor. Apollodorus is a famous patrician amateur. And I, I crave the gentleman's pardon. I understood him to say he was a professional. <laughs> Welcome, Apollodorus. What is your business? First, to deliver to you a present from the Queen of Queens. Who is that? Cleopatra of Egypt. Apollodorus, this is no time for playing with presents. Pray you go back to the Queen and tell her that if all goes well, we shall return to the palace this evening. Caesar, I cannot return. As I approached the lighthouse, some fool threw a great leathern bag into the sea. It broke the nose of my boat. I had hardly time to get to the shore before my poor little cockle shell sank. I am sorry, Apollodorus. The fool shall be rebuked. Well, well, what have you brought me? The queen will be hurt if I don't look at it. Caesar, have we time to waste on this trumpery? The queen's only a child. Just so. That's why we mustn't disappoint her. Caesar, it's a Persian carpet. A beauty. And in it are... So I'm told. Pigeon's eggs and crystal goblets and fragile precious things. I, I dare not from my head have it carried up that narrow ladder from the causeway. Swing it up by the crane, then! The crane? Oh, Caesar, I have sworn to tender this bale of carpet as I tender my own life. Then let them swing you up at the same time. If the chain breaks, you and the pigeon's eggs will perish together. Is Caesar serious? Well, his manner is frivolous. It's because he's an Italian, but he means what he says. Serious or not, he spake well. Give me a squad of soldiers to work the crane. No, no, it's worked by an elderly Tyrion and his son. Well conducted you for 14. What? An old man and a boy work that? Well, 20 men, you mean? No, no, two only, I assure you. They have counterweights on a machine with boiling water, which I don't understand. So it isn't a British design. <laughs> Leave the crane to me, go and await the descent of the chain. <laughs> Good. You will see me presently there, rising like the sun with my treasure. Are you really going to wait here for this foolery, Caesar? Why not? The Egyptians will let you know why not, if they've got enough sense to make a rush before our barricade's finished. And here we are, waiting like children to see a carpet full of pigeon's eggs. Fear not, my son, Rufio. When the first Egyptian takes his first step along the mole, the alarm will sound. And we, too, will reach the barricade before the Egyptians. We, too, Rufio. I, an old man, and you, his biggest boy. And the old man will get there first. I wish I had some more of those dates.
Stand off, my friends. Let's see the sea. Nothing but a heap of shawls. Where are the pigeon's eggs? Approach Caesar and search for them in the shawls. Huh. Treachery. Stand back, Caesar. So the shawls move. There's something alive in there. Oh, it's a serpent. There, Caesar thrust his hand in where the serpent moves. Treacherous dog. Please put up your swords. Apollodorus, your serpent seems to breathe very regularly. Why, this is a pretty little snake. <laughs> Let's have the rest of you. Why, oh, Smother, oh, Caesar, a man stood on me in the boat, and then, then a great sack or something fell upon me out of the sky, then the boat sank, and then I was swung up into the air and bumped down. Well, never mind. Here you are, safe and sound at last. Aye, oh, now that she's here, what are we going to do with her? But, Caesar, this is not proper. She cannot stay here without the companionship of some matron. Shocking. Aren't you glad to see me? Yes, I'm very glad. Rufio is very angry and Britannus is shocked. You can have their heads cut off, can't you? Wouldn't be so useful with their heads cut off as they are now, my seabird. We shall have to go away presently and cut off some of your Egyptians' heads. How you like being left here with a chance of being captured by the little brother of yours if we are beaten, eh? You mustn't leave me alone, Caesar. You will not leave me alone, will you? What? Not when the trumpet sounds and all our lives depend upon Caesar being at the barricade before the Egyptians, eh? Let them lose their lives. They are only soldiers. Cleopatra, when that trumpet sounds, we must take every man his life in his hands and throw it in the face of death. And to my soldiers who have trusted me, there's not one whose hand I shall not hold more sacred than your head. Polidorus, take her back to the palace. By a dolphin, Caesar, to cross the seas with young ladies on my back, my boat is sunk. Yours are either at the barricade or have returned to the city. Doesn't matter. I will not go back. Nobody cares for me. Oh, Cleopatra. You want me to be killed? <laughs> My poor child, your life matters little here to anyone but yourself. Come, Rufio. Caesar, do not leave me. Caesar, oh, we are cut off. The Egyptians have landed from the western harbor between us and the barricade. Rufio, my men of the barricade are lost. I've murdered them. Aye, that's what comes of fooling with this girl here. ourselves here. But I throw in the ladder into the sea. They can't get in without it. And we can't get out if you thought of that. Not get out? Why not? You have ships in the East Harbor. Our galleys are standing in towards us already. And pray by what road are we to walk to the galleys? A road that leaves everywhere the diamond path of the sun and the moon. How far is the nearest galley? Fifty fathom. No, no. Nearly a quarter of a mile, Apollodorus. Defend yourselves here until I send a boat from that galley. Have you wings, perhaps? Water wings, soldier! I will do that too, prisoners. Are you mad, you shall not? Why not? Can I not swim as well as he? Can an old fool dive and swim like a young one? Old? Oh, Rufio, you forget yourself. I'll race to the galley for a week's pay, Father Rufio. Me, me! What is to become of me? I'll carry you on my back to the galley like a dolphin. Rufio, when you see me rise to the surface, throw her in. No, 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 I shall be drowned. And then in with you after her, both of you. Caesar, I am a man and a Briton, not a fish. I must have a boat. I can't swim. Neither can I. Stay here then, Britannus, until I recapture the lighthouse. I'll not forget you. Now, Rufio, have you made up your mind to this folly? Egyptians have made it up for me. And mind where you jump. I don't want you in the small of my back as I come up. One last word, Caesar. Uh, do not let yourself be seen in the more fashionable part of Alexandria until you change your clothes. Oh!
another royal banquet? In Caesar's honor? These Romans are magicians. For six months, a mere handful of them have held the palace against the whole of Egypt's armed forces. And look at their escape from the pharaohs. Who but a magician could swim like a dolphin at Caesar's age, carrying the queen on his back? That might be the queen's magic. She rides on Caesar's back on land now, as on the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Take care. I will find out someday how to make myself served as Caesar is served. Old hook nose. <laughs> Silence. Do you know why I allow you all to chatter impertinently just as you please, instead of treating you as Fatatatita would treat you if she were queen? Because you try to imitate Caesar in everything. And he lets everyone say what they please to him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Because I asked him one day why he did so. And he said, let your women talk and you will learn something from them. What have I to learn from them, I said. What they are, said he. And oh, you should have seen his eyes as he said it. You would have curled up, you shallow thing. <laughs> at whom are you laughing? At me or at Caesar? At Caesar. If you were not a fool, you would laugh at me. And if you were not a coward, you would not be afraid to tell me so. Hey-ho. I wish Caesar were back in Rome. It will be a bad day for you when he goes. Oh, if I were not ashamed to let him see that I am as cruel at heart as my father, I would make you repent that speech. Why do you wish him away? He makes you so terribly prosy and serious and learned and philosophical. It's worse than being religious at our ages. <laughs> Cease this endless cackling, will you? Hold your tongues. Well, well, we must try and live up to Caesar. Pocinus <laughs> <laughs> craves the ear of the queen. I suppose he has bribed you to admit him to me. Now, by my father's gods! Have I not told you not to deny things? You all sell audiences to the queen, as if I saw whom you please and not whom I please. Go, take the bribe and bring in Pocinus. But don't answer me. Go. to play the harp with my own hands. Caesar loves music. Can you teach me? Assuredly. I and no one else can teach the queen. All other teachers are quacks. <laughs> I have exposed them repeatedly. Good, you shall teach me. How long will it take? Not very long, only four years. Your majesty must first become proficient in the philosophy of Pythagoras, and Does then... Does she become proficient in the philosophy of Pythagoras? Oh, she is but a slave. She learns as a dog learns. Well then, I will learn as a dog learns, for she plays better than you. You shall give me a lesson every day for a fortnight. After that, whenever I strike a false note, you shall be flogged. If I strike so many that there is no time to flog you, you shall be thrown into the Nile to feed the crocodiles. Give the girl a gold piece and send them away. Yeah, but, but, but true art cannot be thus forced. What is this? Answering the queen for sooth out with you. <laughs> well, Pothinus, what is the latest news from your rebel friends? I am no friend of rebellion. And a prisoner does not receive news. You are no more a prisoner than I am, than Caesar is. These six months we've been besieged in the palace by my subjects. You are allowed to walk on the beach among the soldiers. Can I go further myself? Or can Caesar? You are but a child, Cleopatra, <laughs> and do not understand these matters. I see you do not know the latest news, Papinus. What is that? That Cleopatra is no longer a child. Shall I tell you how to grow much older and much, much wiser in one day? I should prefer to grow wiser without growing older. Well, go up to the top of the lighthouse and get someone to take you by the hair 
and threw you into the sea. <laughs> She's right, Pathanus. You will come to the shore with much conceit washed out of you. <laughs> Be gone, all of you. I will speak with Pathanus alone. <laughs> what are you waiting for? It is not meet that the queen remain alone. Must I sacrifice you to your father's gods, Fatatatita, to teach you that I am queen of Egypt and not you? You are like the rest of them. You want to be what these Romans call a, a new woman. Now, Pathinus, why did you bribe Fatatatita to bring you hither? Cleopatra, what they tell me is true. You are changed. Do you speak with Caesar every day for six months and you will be changed? It is common talk that you are infatuated with this old man. Infatuated? What does that mean? Made foolish, is it not? Oh, no, I wish I were. Wish that you were made foolish? How so? When I was foolish, I did what I liked. Now that Caesar has made me wise, it is no use my liking or disliking. I do what must be done and have no time to attend to myself. This is not happiness, but it is great. But how can you be sure that he does not love you as men love women? Because I cannot make him jealous. I have tried. <laughs> Perhaps I should have asked then, do you love him? Can one love a god? Besides, I love another Roman. No god, but a man. One who can love and hate. And one who I can hurt and would hurt me. Does Caesar know this? Yes. And he is not angry? He promises to send him to Egypt to please me. I do not understand this man. You understand Caesar. How could you? I do, by instinct. Your Majesty caused me to be admitted today. What message has the Queen for me? This. You think that by making my brother king, you will rule Egypt, because you are his guardian and he is a little silly. The Queen is pleased to say so. The Queen is pleased to say this also. Caesar will eat up you, and Achilles, and my brother, as a cat eats up mice. And he will put on this land of Egypt as a shepherd puts on his garment. And when he has done that, he will return to Rome and leave Cleopatra here as his viceroy. That he shall never do. We have a thousand men to his ten, and we shall drive him and his beggarly legions into the sea. You rant like any common fellow. Cleopatra! Enough, enough! Stratatita! Caesar has spoilt me for talking to weak things like you. I know to whom I must go now. Let me go forth from this hateful place. What angers you? The curse of all the gods of Egypt be upon her. She has sold her country to the Roman that she may buy it back from him with her kisses. Fool, did she not tell you that she would have Caesar gone? You listened? I took care that some honest woman should be at hand whilst you were with her. Mark this, mistress. You thought before Caesar came that Egypt should presently be ruled by you and your crew in the name of Cleopatra. I set myself against... Why that it might be ruled by you and your crew in the name of Ptolemy? Well, better me or even you than a woman with a Roman heart. And that is what Cleopatra has now become. Yeah. Whilst I live, she shall never rule. So guide yourself accordingly. Right here. Yeah, your excellency. The Roman commander will await Caesar here. Hmm. That was a climb. How high have we come? We are on the palace roof, oh, beloved of victory. Good. And the beloved of victory is no more stairs to get up. Caesar approaches. Why, Rufio? A new baldric. A new golden pommel to your sword. And you've had your hair cut. Oh, but not your beard. Impossible. Perfumed by Jupiter Olympus. Well, is it to please myself? No, Rufio, my son, but to please me, to celebrate my birthday. Your birthday? You always have a birthday when there's a pretty girl to be flattered or an ambassador to be conciliated. Rufio. Well, we had seven of them in ten months last year. 
Alas, Rufio, I shall never break myself of these petty deceits. Have you noticed some before my time? Ah, uh, I thought that meant something. What is it? Pothinus wants to speak to you. I advise you to see him. There's some plotting going on here among the women. Who is Pothinus? Oh, yes. Has he not escaped? No. Why not? Have I not told you always to let prisoners escape unless there are special orders to the contrary? Are there not enough mouths to be fed without his? Yes, and if you'd have a little sense and let me cut his throat, you'd save his rations. Anyway, he won't escape. He prefers to stay and spy on us. And you want me to see him? Oh, I don't want anything. I dare say you'll do what you like. Don't put it on me. Well, well. Let's have him in. Oh, there they are. Release your man and send him up. Diamonds besides Cleopatra. Polydorus, the Sicilian. Oh, that Poppin Jay. Come, the Poppin Jay is an amusing dog. He tells a story, sings a song, and saves us the trouble of flattering the queen. Well, he can swim a bit and fence a bit. It might be worse if only he knew how to hold his tongue. But gods forbid he should ever learn. Ah, Pothinus. You're welcome. And what's the news this afternoon? Caesar, I come to warn you of a danger to make you an offer. Never mind the danger, make the offer. Never mind the offer, what's the danger? Caesar, you think that Cleopatra is devoted to you? My friend, I already know what I think. Come to your offer. I will deal plainly. I know not by what magic you have been enabled to defend a palace and a few yards of beach against a city and an army. But we know now that your gods are irresistible and that you are a worker of miracles. I no longer threaten you. <laughs> Very handsome of you, indeed. So be it. You are the master. Yes, yes, my friend. But what then? Spit it out, man. What have you to say? I have to say that you have a traitress in your camp. Cleopatra! The queen! Spit it out sooner, you fool. Now it's too late. What is he doing here? Just going to tell me something about you. You shall hear it. Proceed, Pothinus. I... Caesar... Out with it. What I have to say is for your ears, not for the Queen's. There are means of making you speak. Take care. Caesar does not employ those means. My dear, when a man has anything to tell in this world, the difficulty is not to make him tell it, but to prevent him from telling it too often. Let me celebrate my birthday by setting you free. Farewell. We shall not meet again. Caesar, this mercy is foolish. Will you not give me a private audience? Your life may depend on it. Hell there, guard. Pass the prisoner out. He's released. Now, over you. You've lost your chance. I will speak. You see, torture wouldn't have wrung a word from him. Caesar, you have taught Cleopatra the arts by which the Romans govern the world. Alas, my friend, they cannot even govern themselves. What then? What then? Are you so besotted with her beauty that you do not see that she is impatient to reign in Egypt alone and that her heart is set on your departure? Liar! What? Protestations? Contradictions? No, I do not deign to contradict. Let him talk. From her own lips I have heard it. You are to be her cat's paw. You are to tear the crown from her brother's head and set it on her own, delivering us all into her hand, delivering yourself also. And then Caesar can return to Rome. Or depart through the gate of death, which is nearer and surer. Well, and is not this very natural? Natural? Then you do not resent treachery? Resent? Well, a foolish Egyptian, what have I to do with resentment? Do I resent the wind when it chills me? Or the night when it makes me stumble in the darkness? Tell me such a story as this as to tell me that the sun will rise tomorrow. But it is false, false, I swear it. It is true. Though you swore it a thousand times and believed all you swore. Come, Rufio, let us see Pothinus pass the guard. I have a word to say to him. We must give the Queen a momentary cover herself. So. Tell your friends, Pothinus, they mustn't think I'm opposed to a reasonable settlement of the country's affairs. Tatadita! Tatadita! Please try and be comforted. Can they hear us? No, dear heart, no. If he leaves the palace alive, never see my face again. He? 
But I must sort out his life. I strike his name from your lips. Dash him down from the wall. Break him on the stones. Kill, kill, kill him. The dog shall perish. Hail in this, and you go out from before me forever. So be it. You shall not see my face until his eyes are darkened. Come soon, soon. As the light dies, he shall die. <laughs> so you come back to me, Caesar. I thought you were angry. Welcome, Apollodorus. Cleopatra grows more womanly beautiful from week to week. Truth, Apollodorus? Far, far short of the truth. When Rufio threw a pearl into the sea, Caesar fished up a dial. Caesar fished up a touch of rheumatism. Come on. Yes, dinner. Yes, dinner. dinner. I've ordered such a dinner for you, Caesar. What are we to have? Peacock's brains. Peacock's brains, Apollodorus. Not for me. I prefer nightingale's tongue. Roast boar, Rufio. Ah, good. What has become of my leathern cushion? I've got new ones for you, Caesar. These cushions, Caesar, are of Maltese gauze, stuffed with rose leaves. Rose leaves? Am I a caterpillar? Oh, what a shame, my new cushion. What shall we serve to whet Caesar's appetite? Any oysters? Assuredly. British oysters? British oysters, of course. Oysters, then. Sea hedgehogs for me. Have we nothing solid to begin with? Feel fairs with asparagus. Fattened fowls, Rufio. Have some fattened fowls. Aye, that'll do. Feel fairs for me. Caesar will date to choose his wine, Sicilian, Tuscan, Macedonian, Chianti. All Greek. Try the Sicilian, Caesar. Bring me my barley water. Ugh. Bring me my Falernian. It's a waste of time giving you dinner, Caesar. My scullions would not condescend to your diet. Well, well, let's try the Falernian. But when I return to Rome, I shall make laws against these extravagances. I will even get the laws carried out. Never mind. Today you are to be like other people. Idle, luxurious and kind. Well, well. For once, I will sacrifice my comfort. There. So now you're satisfied. <laughs> and you no longer believe I long for your departure for Rome? I no longer believe anything. My brains are asleep. Besides, who knows whether I shall return to Rome? Huh? Eh? What? One year of Rome is like another, except that I grew older. It's no better here in Egypt. The old men, when they're tired of life, say, we have seen everything except the source of the Nile. Why not see that? Dear Padre, will you come with me and drag the flood to its cradle in the heart of the regions of mystery? Shall I make you a new kingdom and build you a holy city there in the great unknown? Yes, yes, you shall. Now you'll conquer Africa with two legions before I finish the roast boar. No scoffing. This is a noble scheme. Come, let's name the holy city and consecrate it with Sicilian wine. Cleopatra shall name it herself. It shall be called Caesar's gift to his beloved. No, no. Something vaster than that. Something universal like the starry firmament. Why not simply the cradle of the Nile? No, the Nile is my ancestor and he's a god. Oh, I thought of something. The Nile shall name it himself. Let us call upon him altogether. Send for him. Away with all of you. I am a priestess and have power to take your charge from you. What hocus pocus is this? It is not hocus pocus. To do it properly, we should kill something to please him. But perhaps he will answer Caesar without that if we spill some wine to him. Why not call on our hawk headed friend then? Shh, he will hear you and be angry. The source of the Nile is not in his district, I expect. Now let us call on the Nile altogether. You must say with me. Send us thy voice, Father Nile. Send, Send us thy, thy voice, voice, Father Nile. Nile. Ah! What was that? What was It that? is nothing. They are beating some slave. Nothing. A man with a knife in him, I'll swear. A murder? Psst. Silence. Did you hear that? Another cry? 
No, it's bad. Something fell, I think. Something with bones in it, huh? Rufio. Will you leave me, Caesar? Apollodorus, are you going? Faith, dearest queen, my appetite is gone. Apollodorus, go down to the courtyard, find out what has happened. Your soldiers have killed somebody, perhaps. What does it matter? This must be seen to. Is she drunk? Not with wine. The queen looks again on the face of her son. Mischief between those two. Cleopatra, what has happened? Nothing, dearest Caesar, nothing. I am innocent. Dear Caesar, are you angry with me? Why do you look at me so? I have been here with you all the time. How can I know what has happened? That is true. Of course it is true. You know it is true, Rufio. I shall know. Presently. Caesar, remember, your bodyguard is within call. Why do you allow Rufio to speak to me so? You should teach him his place. Teach him to be my enemy and to hide his thoughts from me as you are now hiding yours. Why do you say that, Caesar? Indeed, indeed, I am not hiding anything. You are wrong to treat me like this. I am only a child. And you turn into stone because you think someone has been killed? I can't bear it. <laughs> There. I know you hate tears. You shall not be troubled with them. Only, I am so silly. I cannot help being hurt when you speak coldly. Of course, you are quite right. It is dreadful to think of anyone being killed or even hurt. And I hope nothing really serious. What has frightened you into this? What have you done? Ah, that sounds like the answer. I have not betrayed you, Caesar, I swear it. I know that. I haven't trusted you. They're tearing the palace down and driving us into the sea straight away. We laid hold of this when occasion we were clearing him out of the courtyard. Release him. What has offended the citizens, Lucius Septimius? What did you expect, Caesar? Porthinus was a favorite of theirs. What has happened to Porthinus? I set him free here but an hour ago. Did they not pass him out? Aye, through the gallery arch, 60 feet above ground, with three inches of steel in his ribs. He is as dead as Pompey. We are quits now as to killing. You and I. Assassin. Our prisoner, our guest, Rufio. Whoever did it was a wise man and a friend of yours. But none of us had a hand in it. Now, it's no use frowning at me. He was slain by order of the Queen of Egypt. I am not Julius Caesar, the dreamer who allows every slave to insult him. Rufio said I did well. Now the others shall judge of me too. This Pothinus sought to make me conspire with him to betray Caesar. I refused, and he cursed me, and came privily to Caesar to accuse me of his own treachery. He insulted me, me the queen, to my face. Caesar would not avenge me. He spoke him fair and set him free. Was I right to avenge myself? Speak, Lucius. I do not gainsay it, but you'll get little thanks for it from Caesar. Apollodorus, speak. Was I wrong? I have but one word of blame, most beautiful. You should have called on me your knight, and in fair duel, I should have slain the slanderer. I will be judged by your very slave, Caesar. Britannus, speak. Was I wrong? Were treachery, falsehood, and disloyalty left unpunished, society must become like an arena full of wild beasts tearing one another to pieces. Caesar is in the wrong. And so the verdict is against me, it seems.
Listen to me, Caesar. If one man in all Alexandria can be found to say I did wrong, I swear to have myself crucified on the door of the palace by my own slaves. If one man in all the world can be found, now or forever, to know that you did wrong, that man will have either to conquer the world as I have or be crucified by it. Do you hear? These knockers at your gates are also believers in vengeance and in stabbing. You have slain their leader. It is right that they should slay you. And so to the end of history, murder shall breed murder, always in the name of right and honor and peace, until the gods are tired of blood and create a race that can understand. Let the Queen of Egypt now give her orders for vengeance and take her measures for defense, for she has renounced Caesar. You will not desert me, Caesar. You will defend the palace. You have taken the powers of life and death upon you. I am only a dreamer. But they will kill me. Why not? In pity. Pity? What has it come to this so suddenly that nothing can save you but pity? Did it save Pothinus? Caesar, enough of preaching. The enemy is at the gate. And what has held him baffled at the gate all these months? Was it my folly as you deem it or your wisdom? In this Egyptian Red Sea of blood, whose hand has held all your heads above the waves? And yet when Caesar says to such an one, friend, go free, you, clinging for your little life to my sword, dare steal out and stab him in the back. By the gods, I'm tempted to open my hand and let you all sink into the flood. Will you desert us because we're a parcel of fools? I mean no harm by killing. I do it as a dog kills a cat, by instinct. We're all dogs at your heels, but we have served you faithfully. Alas, Rufio, my son, as dogs, we are like to perish now in the streets. Caesar, what you say has an Olympian ring in it. But I'm still on the side of Cleopatra. If we must die, she shall not want the devotion of a man's heart or the strength of a man's arm. But I do not want to die. Oh, ignoble. Ignoble. Hearken to me, Caesar. It may be ignoble, but I too mean to live as long as I can. Well, my friend, you are likely to outlive Caesar. Does Caesar despair? He who has never hoped can never despair. Caesar, in good or bad fortune, looks his fate in the face. Look it in the face now, and it will smile as it always has for Caesar. You presume to encourage me? I offer you my services. I will change sides, if you will have me. What, at this point? At this point. Do you suppose Caesar is mad to trust you? I do not ask him to trust me until he is victorious. I ask for my life and the command in Caesar's army. And since Caesar is a fair dealer, I will pay in advance. Pay? How? With a piece of good news for you. What news? What news? What news did you say, my son, Rufio? The relief has arrived. Mithridates of Pergamus is on the march. Is it not so, Lucius Septimius? He has taken Pelusium. Lucius, you are henceforth my officer. Rufio, the Egyptians must have sent every soldier from the city to prevent Mithridates crossing the Nile. There is nothing in the streets now but mob, mob. It is so. Mithridates is marching by the great road to Memphis to cross above the delta. Achilles will fight him there. Achilles shall fight Caesar there. See, Rufio. Here is the palace. Mm -hmm. Here is the theater. Now you take 20 men and pretend to go by this street. And whilst they're stoning you, out will come the cohorts by this and this. My streets are right, are they, Lucius? Aye, that's the pig market. Yes, I saw them the day we arrived. Britannus tell Petronius that within an hour, half our forces must take ship for the western lake and see to my horse and armor. With the rest, I shall march round the lake and up the Nile and catch Achilles in the desert. Lucius, give the word to start. Apollodorus, lend me your sword and your right arm for this campaign. I and my heart and life to boot. I accept both. Are you ready? Ready for art. The art of war. Come, this is something like business. Is it not, my only son? Mm. You understand about the streets, Rufio? I think I don't. I'll get through them at all events. Caesar. Caesar. Have you forgotten me? Oh, I'm busy now, my child, busy. When I return, your affair shall be settled. Farewell. Be good and patient. That game's played and lost, Cleopatra. <laughs> the woman always gets the worst of it. Go follow your master. A word first. Tell your executioner that if Pathinus had been properly killed in the throat, he wouldn't have called out. Uh, your man bungled his work. How do you know it was a man? It wasn't you. Oh, you were with us when it happened. Was it she? With her own hands? Whoever it was, let my enemies beware of her. 
Look to it, Rufio. You who dare make the Queen of Egypt a fool before Caesar. I will look to it, Cleopatra. Let's teach these Egyptians how to fight and how to run. Eh? And then, home to Rome! My ship awaits me. The art of Caesar's farewell to Egypt has arrived. And now, Rufio, what remains to be done before I go? Why, you've not yet appointed a Roman governor for this province. What say you to Mithridates of Pergamus? Why, that you want him elsewhere. Indeed. Well, what do you say to yourself? I... I, a governor... Are you dreaming? Do you not know I'm only the son of a freedman? Has not Caesar called you his son? Peace a while there and hear me. Hear the service, quality, rank, and name of the Roman governor. By service, Caesar's shield. By quality, Caesar's friend. By rank, a Roman soldier. By name, Rufio.
Aye, I'm Caesar's shield. But what use will I be when I'm no longer on Caesar's arm? Where is that British islander of mine? Here, yes, Caesar. And who bade you, pray, thrust yourself into the battle of the Delta, uttering the barbarous cries of your native land? Caesar, I ask you to excuse the language that escaped me in the heat of the moment. And how did you, who cannot swim, cross the canal with us when we stormed the camp? Caesar, I clung to the tail of your horse. These aren't the deeds of a slave, Britannus, but of a free man. Caesar, I was born free. But they call you Caesar's slave. Only a Caesar's slave have I found real freedom. Well said. Ungrateful that I am, I was about to set you free. But now I will not part with you for a million talents. That Roman knows how to make men serve him. Apollodorus, I leave the art of Egypt in your charge. Remember, Rome loves art and will encourage it. I understand, Caesar. Egypt must pay her tribute to Rome in art. Mm -hmm. Now, what else have I to do before I embark? There's something I cannot remember. I wonder what it can be. Well, it must remain undone. We must not waste this favorable wind. Caesar, I'm loath to let you go back to Rome without your shield. There are too many daggers there. It matters not. I've always disliked the idea of dying. I'd rather be killed. Farewell, Rufio. Farewell. Farewell, Apollodorus. Oh, something. How could you let me forget her, Rufio? Has Cleopatra no part in this leave-taking? Had I gone without seeing you, I should never have forgiven myself. Is this mourning for me? No. Ah, oh, that was thoughtless of me. It's for your brother. No. For whom, then? Ask the Roman governor whom you have left us. Rufio? Yes, Rufio. He who is to rule in Caesar's name, in Caesar's way, according to Caesar's boasted laws of life. He's to rule as he can, Cleopatra. He's taken the work upon him and will do it in his own way. Not in your way, then. Without punishment, without revenge, without judgment. Now, that is the right way, the great way, the only possible way in the end. Believe it, Rufio, if you can. My, I believe it, Caesar, but look you, Cleopatra had a tigress that killed men at her bidding. I thought she might bid it kill you someday. So, without malice, I only cut its throat. That's why Cleopatra comes to you in mourning. He has shed the blood of my servant, Patatatita. Upon your head be it, Caesar, as upon his, if you hold him, fear it. On my head be it, then. But it was well done, Rufio. Um, don't be angry with me. I'm sorry for that poor tilted teeter. <laughs> ah, you're laughing. Does that mean reconciliation? No, no, no. Only it is so ridiculous to hear you call her tota teeter. As much a child as ever, Cleopatra. Haven't I made a woman of you after all? Oh, it is you who are a great baby. You make me seem silly because you will not behave seriously. But you have treated me badly and I do not forgive you. Bid me farewell. I will not. I will send you a beautiful present from Rome. Beauty from Rome to Egypt, indeed. What can Rome give me that Egypt cannot give me? That's true, Caesar. If the present is to be really beautiful, I shall have to buy it for you in Alexandria. You're forgetting the treasures for which Rome is most famous, my friend. You cannot buy them in Alexandria. What are they, Caesar? Her sons. Come, Cleopatra, forgive me and bid me farewell. And I will send you a man. Not old and ripe for the knife, not hiding a bald head under his conqueror's laurels, not stooped for the weight of the world on his shoulders, but brisk and fresh, strong and young, hoping in the morning, fighting in the day and reveling in the evening. Will you take such an one in exchange for Caesar? His name? His name? Shall it be Mark Antony? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad hand at a bargain, mistress, if you'll swap Caesar for Antony. So now you're satisfied? You will not forget. 